Hey, what's up guys? It's Tyler. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going a little bit old school and I'm just showing you guys what I would call a Shrollet rally. It was supposed to be just a solid rally. It ended up getting pretty shreddy and everybody loved it. I thought it was a blast. So I wanted to just kind of show you what happens on a solid rally that kind of turns into a shred rally. So hopefully you enjoy this kind of, not raw, but not really fully edited. It's just kind of undercooked. So hopefully you enjoy this undercooked video. I'm gonna be doing a little voiceover here and there uh, throughout, just to kind of tell you what's going on and describe what's happening during the adventure. Anyway guys, uh, that's it for me. I'll just talk to you through the video. Much love, thanks for watching. Tyler out. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. You look awesome right now. <laughs> so cool with that sun in the background just cruising down these rocks. This is Warren. He's riding a GPX TSE 250. He came all the way out from New York State. This rally was uh, called the EPIC, the Emergency Psychological Intervention Committee. Or so. I don't know what C was for, but... <laughs> So this spot here is kind of when we determined that it was going to be more of a solid rally. Jason pulled up to this and he said, oh, the trail stops right here, it's just a cliff. And I said, uh, yeah, that's actually the trail. And so here we are going down it. You know? Jason made it down it fine. This is uh, Corey here. Yeah, ain't no thing. He's on a GPX 250. Maybe a 15 foot down, yeah. Chad's also on a GPX 250. Get on that, get on that rear brake and just, just mellow it down. Just ride it down, really. You don't have to do a lot of brakes. This is Warren. Yeah, Warren. He's on the Ooh. TSE 250. The other two are on the FSE 250. Oh yeah, like nothing. There's Jason on the uh, KTM 500, I believe it is. Now we're looking at uh, Corey's camera. There's Warren coming down. It gives you a little better, better angle. He's a little closer, a little uh, not so wide of an angle Chad's camera. Just send it. <laughs> Chad just cruises down. This is kind of the other technical spot, just right around the corner. You can see me spotting Warren there on the edge of the cliffside. This is shot with the uh, Panasonic GH5. It's one of my favorite cameras ever. You can, if you see me in this video, really, you can't really see me very often. I'm the one that's usually filming everything. Uh, but Corey was nice enough to film some. But I usually have that camera strapped to my chest somewhere so I can get to it quick. Uh, or, in some cases, I'll have it strapped to, uh, or strapped inside of my box on the front of my DRZ. This is Corey's perspective coming by there. I have the camera out. You'll see the same shot through here. Just a nice little narrow crook in the rocks. Keeps his feet on the pegs. Nicely done, Corey. All the guys on this rally really knew how to ride. Chad's taking it easy on Warren's TSE. They swap bikes for a minute. Here I am on the 300 Sparta. Bike is really, really good, but... I do, I mean, not to perpetuate the KTM stereotype, but I do keep having problems. The latest problem was that the airbox is not sealing to the airbox boot. And so I changed the, I was changing the filter out a little bit ago. I've been changing the filter often, taking care of the bike. And I noticed that I could pretty much slide my finger behind the airbox cage on the back side. So, the airbox boot had warped, which is not my favorite thing. Uh, I kind of jimmy rigged it and got it to work uh, and seal up good, but didn't really like it. Um, anyway, the bike is working perfectly, but there's just a few little things that happen that just bother me. I uh, was riding Chad's FSC 250, the GPX here, cruising down through some sandy whoops, following Chad. He was riding on the 300 for a minute. Here I am following Jason through a nice little river wed, a river bed that braids through the wash, single track versus uh, wash. So I'm taking the single track line while he takes the river bed a little bit. It was Jason who actually suggested that I 
try the uh, GPX in the first place, so it's kind of interesting. Everybody has a link to GPX in this <laughs> on this route. This, this is Chad going up the butt crack. We call that <laughs> the butt crack for good reason. Here it is from Corey's perspective. Yeah, he just cruised right up at no problem. As you can see to the right, that's a super scary drop. To the left, you can see it's probably a good 15 feet and I almost <laughs> went off it. So here's Corey's perspective on my little dump there. Almost got a little bit sketchy. I was really glad to dump the bike to the right side. This is just a little perspective from Chad's camera to show you the angle of what's happening here. Very, very steep obstacle. It doesn't really show on the other camera camera views, but. All right, I'm gonna turn it. I think one of the main differences between a solid rally, which is kind of the medium difficulty rally, and a shred rally, which is the harder difficulty rally, is a shred rally, we're probably going to get off the bikes and push some bikes up stuff. And uh, a solid rally, it's usually we can ride everything normally. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know this was going to be a butt crack trip. <laughs> <laughs> you okay, Chad? Just needed a couple good breaths. <laughs> Here's Chad sliding down the butt crack. <laughs> That's pretty steep. You got steep. any TP for this bunghole? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I don't think I got a big enough wet wipe for this one. <laughs> anyway, that gives you a little bit of perspective on some of the stuff that we'll we'll tackle on a shred ride. Um, it doesn't always have to be that way. The rallies are super, I don't know the right word, customizable or modular or whatever, but we can basically ride what the group feels comfortable riding. And so, you know, this rally was a solid rally, but everybody came and was ready to ride and just felt really confident. And really that's what it comes down to is just the level of confidence that people are feeling. Um, you know, how hard do you want to work? How hard do you want to push yourself? And if everybody wants to push themselves harder, we'll push ourselves harder. And if everybody wants to kind of mellow it down, then we'll mellow it down. So generally, you know, the rallies, everybody's like, oh, should I come on a solid rally? Should I go for the harder one, the shred rally? Um, you know, should I come on a schooling rally? And really the difference between all of those, because we've had schooling rallies that end up going on shred trails because the people who come decide, hey, I wanna push and push and push until I start really struggling. And they surprise themselves, I love high fives. <laughs> they surprise themselves on how far they can push themselves and their motorcycles before really starting to struggle. And it's all a mental game. There's not, you know, of course there's talent and there's skill to it. I mean, obviously there, you know, there's people out there who are amazing at riding bikes, but generally you can point your motorcycle at pretty much anything. And if you know how to stay on it, if you know the body positioning to stay on it, you can probably do it. And so a lot of the times it's just a matter of confidence, whether or not you feel confident trying something or going up something. Um, so that's the difference really between a shred and a solid and even a schooling rally really. Um, is just how confident is the group that you're with and how confident are you and are you willing to try things that are going to push yourself or do you want to take it more easy um, and it's okay to take it easy it's totally fine that's why we have the veto rule so we just want to make sure everybody's comfortable and having fun but still pushing themselves just a little bit so anyway I have swapped to the drone here um, I'm just going to leave the drone footage pretty well unedited and show you kind of how I try to get different shots. So right here, I knew the other guys were getting a little far ahead, but I knew if I flipped around to the side, I could get that nice kind of uh, back off cliff shot. 
right there. When you're flying a drone, or at least when I'm flying a drone, I don't really think about like, oh, I've got to have the entire thing look just absolutely perfect, you know? Um, a lot of the times you've got to flip that yaw really hard and you've got to tw twist the drone and the footage is going to look crappy during those moments. The key is, is to line up your shot, set up your shot, get that really choppy, crappy looking footage out of the way as quick as you can to line up a really smooth, good shot um, in the future. So right now I'm just doing kind of easy drone stuff, just fairly low following close behind. That's the easiest shot to get. And then as you kind of curve around here, it gets a little tougher because you can't see where you're going. It would be so awesome if DJI made a drone that had a camera that looked where you were flying towards and then a camera that looked where your camera was facing. Does that make sense? So you could always see what you're flying towards, um, but then you could also see what you're filming. So you have basically a dual screen. So right there I did a little you know, flip around that didn't look so good. That is pretty hard yaw. A, a yaw is side to side. That's the twisting of the drone. And so here I've got a really slight yaw to the right. You can see, just trying to tell you what yaw is. I, you know what it is now. <laughs> but yeah, nice and beautiful. I get a little ahead of Warren. That's Warren on the far right there. Jason's ahead of him. It's tricky to try to keep people in the third. So if you've done anything with photography or taken any photography classes, you know about the rule of thirds. And so I'm try I try to keep riders in the rule of thirds. Um, but when they're, you know, motorcycles can stop and, and then start again on a, on a dime. They're really quite fast and they're tricky to follow really well and keep them in the third because if they slow down suddenly, which they do, because this terrain is a lot rougher than it looks on the drone. Um, you know, if somebody slows down suddenly, then it gets really difficult uh, to keep them in the third, and I usually blow past them. So right there, just trying to get the camera set up, getting a nice wide shot there. Right now I'm following Corey. Chad is really fast and so Chad decided he was just gonna go like buck wild and like fly down the trail um, the usually the rule of thumb with the drone is try to stay together and I'll try to get everybody in the shot if a group breaks up I'll try to get the different kind of groups um, and if somebody if somebody bolts off into the front you know usually I'm not gonna go chase after them I have to try to get footage for everybody, so I'll get just the footage of the of the majority, basically, um, and then try to get just a little bit of everybody. But anyway, it set up a nice opportunity for me to get some backwards-facing shots right there. Backwards-facing is always risky because you're flying absolutely blind backwards. Um, but then again, you saw from the earlier footage, you can pretty well tell that. You know, unless I get real low, I'm not going to hit anything. It's pretty bald out there. So here I am really backing off a lot, trying to set up a good shot to go sideways with the drone. I think those always look, well, they don't always look really good, but they look pretty cool if you can execute them. And uh, here we go. So I'm going to start flying sideways. I know that there's really nothing to the left there. I've got to yaw a little bit to keep them in there. But I love the way that those side facing shots look another tricky thing about flying the drone is I'm looking at just very small pixels on a screen you know on on my little phone and my phone is kind of garbage um, it doesn't get very bright and when I try to boost the brightness it it'll boost for like one minute and then LG says hey I know what's best for you and this is gonna cause eye strain and it's like, I want my brightness boosted, you jerks. <laughs> uh, right here, you can see me going straight up. And that's because the uh, video grayed out on the drone. And so I lost reception. I had to go straight up to get reception again. And then I'm going to try to dip down to their level once again and get some of that nice kind of lower to the ground footage. But every once in a while, I'll have to do that. I'll have to stop uh, when the drone, you know, when the screen goes gray, I can't see where I'm flying and I'll have to stop and go straight up. Uh, so that's what happened there. You can see from the drone footage, you know, it's a lot of footage. And so, 
you know, it's really cool when that's you in the footage and you're watching and it looks really good. Um, you know, as for just like an, an entire video full of drone footage, I think that probably would get pretty boring. So it's nice just to have kind of clip it up. Now right here I made a mistake because just below the horizon of the drone, I should have dropped down because there's a really cool cliff there. And instead I opted to stay high and get in there and get that uh, sky in the third. I like to have the horizon in my drone shots. That's one of the reasons why I haven't gone with the new Skydio drone. I was really looking forward to that drone. Um, and after watching some of uh, uh, every single Sunday's shots with the Skydio 2, um, I realized, you know, they have to, the, the drone has to stay fairly close to the subject. And so it's pointing down, seems like almost always at a 45 degrees, unless you really start moving and then the drone has to catch up. And that's kind of the only way the Skydio gets the horizon in the shot, which that's not my jam. I love having the horizon in the shot. I want it to be in that upper third. Having the sky in the shot just, uh, it makes it look so much better in my opinion. Anyway, here I am just uh, burning out battery. I'm bringing the drone back. Had a nice long flight there. I cut quite a bit of it out uh, just because, you know, drone flight's really cool in small doses, but in long doses, it's kind of like, okay, they're riding along and that's a cool landscape. And <laughs> anyway, yeah, usually I'll just find a nice little rock to sit down and I keep my helmet on so that uh, I can, anyway, block as much of the sun as I can. As I was saying earlier, the screen on my phone is extremely dull and it's really hard to see just little pixels on there anyway to try to record. This is at a place called the Purple Hills. Uh, it's one of the favorites. It's a place that's in a great spot. It's kind of like the middle rally point of all of Warner Valley. And so, you know, it's, it's a nice place to kind of start an adventure. It's a nice place to end an adventure. It's called the Purple Hills. You can kind of see them to the left of the screen there. This is going up above them, and I love this little trail that goes above them. It's just fun. It's just a fun little, you know, rip. Little bit of exposure there. Probably looks worse on camera than it actually is. But uh, those purple hills you see in a bunch of my videos, and usually we'll, we'll hang out there for a while because, I mean, it's a big playground, and it's basically just these enormous berms, and occasionally it'll be, there's a ton of side-by-sides and stuff like that but most of the time it's pretty bare and you can just go there and play. And you can play there for hours. So after we've gone on a long you know, ride, that's a good place to kind of stop and I'll get the drone out and just kind of ride around and people can ride around to their heart's content. Some people are tired and they don't want to ride anymore, um, but some people still want to push themselves a little bit, kind of the end of the day thing. And uh, as you can see, you know, it's like a nice little roller coaster. Um, here's Corey and his camera cruising up a pretty technical section. Nicely done. <laughs> he said he didn't like it, but he did it just fine. Here we are cruising back. Obviously in the more summertime rallies, uh, this one was early May, and it, it starts to get pretty hot out there. And so we took off really early in the morning, and we were heading back at about noon. So this is the beginning of the next day, day two of the rally. And uh, we went out to a totally different area. This is on the other side of town. But still, this spot right here is probably only 20 minutes from my house, which is awesome. And most of that 20 minutes is on dirt. It's nice to get down in these, you know, washes though. Early in the morning, it's still, still nice and shady. Unfortunately though, if there hasn't been a lot of rain, it can get really dusty in those washes. So you can see with the dust on my screen there, on, on my lens, it gets super dusty in those washes. So we kind of like the rain to happen before rallies. I will factor that in on the trails that I choose for the rallies we do. Um, I was thinking, hey, it's early in the morning, we should be okay for dust. And then when we get up on top of these ridges, it does get uh, less dusty you know when you're kind of down in those gullies the dust will kind of accumulate and there's no wind blowing it through but up on the ridges there's usually a good enough breeze that it will get it out of the way it's a good hill climb here Chad's cruising up it yes 
Well done. Nice. You got it. Keep that going. Keep it going. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Stay on it. You got it. You got it. Oh. Dude, you almost made it. Just so close to the top, you know. There goes Corey. You got it, you got it. Just keep muscling. Yes. Yeah! Woohoo! This is a nice wide shot. You can see the motorcycles are riding in there. That's looking back towards town. And I'm going to leave in the, you know, the the quick punch-ins and stuff like that so you can kind of see what, you know, what the raw footage looks like. Obviously, everything that I do out there is handheld and I can't make it look really really amazing, but the stabilization on the GH5 is pretty excellent. But look at that scene right there. That's just so so up here. Gorgeous. There are some rocks. Oh no. There we go. <laughs> Up here there's some rocks. Don't be afraid to hit those embedded rocks at the right side of the trail. Jason on the mighty KTM. Nailed it. Cruising right up through. Nice, guys. That's very northern Utah-esque right there with some rocks and... Yeah, the guys, uh, three of the guys on the rally from northern Utah and they were saying, hey, this feels like northern Utah. Obviously the scenery is much different, but the, the kind of the rockiness of the trails on this area is, is quite a lot like northern Utah. Corey's cruising right up, no problem. Here's Corey's perspective. I don't know why I really like seeing this, you know. It's just that's what's kind of behind the scenes going on when I'm filming somebody. So here's that same shot, but from the camera that you were looking at from Corey's camera. Does that make sense? The way Chad's coming cruising up. Now Chad and Corey and Warren have all been out to a rally before. Chad and Corey came to a solid rally Man, before, decided to come back to another solid camera. rally, and Warren had come to a schooling rally and decided to come to uh, this solid rally, which basically turned into a shred rally. Now this is kind of cool because you can see the trail go off to the left there, and that's the trail that I took everybody on. Um, but here's Corey, or not Corey, but Chad. Corey's filming. Chad's going up the trail, but... Uh, Chad opted to go up the gnarlier line and with our headsets on we can say hey I'm going up this line or I'm going to try this and I can tell people hey that cliff's out of the top or hey that won't connect up so we'll all stop and it kind of keeps the group together so it's really really nice to have those headsets uh, just to kind of keep the group together and keep keep a finger on where everybody's yeah, at. Yeah keep that power going. Alright if you guys don't mind stopping at the top there that'd be cool. See, that's another example of where the headsets are so useful. Uh, did you know, just kind of say, hey, hold up right there. We'll wait for the rest of the group to come. And that way we can kind of stay out of each other's dust sometimes too. Uh, it's just really nice. It's kind of a gnarlier corkscrew hill climb there for Chad. Sorry, my camera work was pretty crappy. I was standing on a super precarious rock. Didn't want to fall over. You got it. These GPX bikes, they're impressive. No lie. They get these guys through a lot of <laughs> a lot of hairy stuff. Here we are in eco mode. Just cruising through with some nice scenery in the background. <laughs> Sorry about the sniff. Had allergies. Oh 
So here we've gone back in time a little bit. I'm now following Warren uh, up on top of the ridge. I call it Little Zion up there because it really starts to look like Zion National Park. Uh, obviously there are no motorcycle trails through Zion National Park. And so it's nice to get up in this area and kind of, you know, experience a little bit of that Zion-ish type of feel with the rocks and the trees and everything like that. But it's pretty short. But the scenery up there is fantastic. So you can see coming up over here, boom. Suddenly you're like popping up over on top of the world, looking down on the valley. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And this Ridgeline single track is one of my favorite all-time single tracks that I've ever been on. It's, it's rocky, so you can't necessarily go speeding through it. So your pace has to be, you know, it kind of limits the pace and it... Funny enough, it slows you down, so you have to kind of take in the scenery. Uh, and it's just beautiful. There's some spots on it that get pretty steep, both downhill and uphill. And then there's some spots that are a little exposed on the left side, but not a huge deal. This trail right here, when you're going up this side instead of down it like we're going. Oh man, your foot pegs didn't even touch. Oh. You can hear my foot pegs did touch. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> this, this is normally called the Punch Tyler in the Face Trail because uh, it's gotten gnarlier as the years have gone on. But a long time ago, I, you know, I took people up this trail and uh, yeah, we, they called it the Punch Tyler in the Face Trail because after we did that, they wanted to punch, actually during it, they wanted to punch me in the face. But then when we actually made it up that spot, you know, everybody felt really triumphant and cool and, you know, they were all stoked that they actually did it. So I've never actually been punched in the face, luckily, which is good. Holy moly. This is kind of a cool spot down in the wash. There's some spots where it, uh, water is coming out of the rocks. So you get little springs, it's really beautiful. And uh, there gets to be a lot of vegetation through there. And this really narrow spot through the rocks is nice and cool. It's just a cool spot, you know? Here's the guys coming the other way through that. Just kind of a cool shot to show you how narrow that is. It almost is it like a roof over your head? But. Corey's gonna kick me in the face there. <laughs> so there's, you know, I've cut out some, but there are shots like this where I just get ahead and I'm like, hey, I'm gonna get at the back again. I lead from the back. That's one thing that you gotta understand if you come on a rally, is I lead from the back of the group. I'll tell you where we're going to go over the headset. And the reason why I do that is I want to make sure that everybody is moving along ahead of me so nobody's getting left behind. I like to sweep. And also, I get the footage that way. I can get the footage of the, of the last rider. And finally, it keeps you out of the dust. Your air filter, your lungs, everything like that. It's not so fun to ride in the dust. It's hard to sweep. And so I don't want people on my, on my rallies to have to sweep a whole lot. Sometimes you will. Um, but... I'm okay with sweeping. I'll take the dust. I want you to have the best experience. And so basically if I'm up in front creating dust, I don't, you know, that, that makes it a little less fun for you. So I'd rather be in the back where I can sweep, make sure everybody is like, okay, and film and, you know, just stay out of the dust. So if that's ever the case and I want to be, you know, back behind everybody, just that's why. I think we might be headed for a dead end. This was kind of a fun thing because uh, Jason and Warren, we just kept going up this wash and I'd never actually been farther than we had been here. And so, you know, yeah. a lot of the times on these rallies, we'll just go do things that I haven't done. And that makes it really, really fun because um, it presents new challenges for me. It presents, you know, there's some excitement. There's Warren doing a nice little wrap up a little ledge. 
it's funny on the camera with it wide like this it's hard to see the you know the height of that it's not extremely high but that's a you know that's a difficult little obstacle and you got to re remember you know the previous rally that Warren came to was a schooling rally and so he was doing uh, much more difficult things on this rally which was awesome Yeah, a lot of the times, some of the best times, some of the best experiences on these rallies is when we go and explore new places that I haven't been. Because I've covered a lot of ground in southwest Utah, but I haven't covered all of it. And so to find new trails and new areas is always really exciting. And I love it. And, uh, you know, it's always fun to go through. Sometimes it's a dead end. Sometimes, you know, if we go through a wash like this, it just cl cliffs out. It doesn't lead to anywhere. But realistically, you know, something that I said as I turned around on this thing, I said, sorry guys for turning you around and leading you to a dead end. And they said, hey, we're all just going home at the end of this anyway. It's not like we're going somewhere and have to make good time. We're riding in motorcycles for the sake of riding motorcycles. So to hit a dead end wasn't a big deal. Here's, here's, yeah, Chad. Making some dust, but it looks so cool. Oh wow, last time I threw, came through here, like two weeks ago, it was, this was all water. I guess it's still a little bit. So that is something, uh, maybe you heard me right there, I said, hey, when I came through here a couple weeks ago, this was all water. And now, you know, there's still some water in there. But I went and rode this trail recently, and there was almost no water in it anymore. And it's funny how different, you know, seasons can change the trails so quickly. You know, a storm can change these trails dramatically. And so, on one of the rallies, I had a guy get a little upset with me because we went and he did. We did something that was uh, probably a little over his head. He didn't feel comfortable doing it. And so we ended up turning around, and it was totally fine. Everything worked out fine. But, um, you know, he, he asked me, he was like, hey, don't you go out and scout these trails? And I do. Um, I do. But, I mean, we there's hundreds and hundreds of trails. I can't really scout them all. Especially um, on every single rally, I'm trying to find the trails that's going to suit the specific members of the rally you know there's only six people coming uh and so it's pretty you know i try to get a feel for what everybody's comfortable with and then go do the trails that people are going to be comfortable with that maybe will push them a little bit but sometimes people don't want to be pushed and so you know in that case we're not gonna we're not gonna go do gnarly stuff um and it all it always depends on the rally however if you come on a shred rally you need to expect to do difficult stuff. And if you come on a scenic rally or a schooling rally, you need to expect to do really mellow stuff on a scenic rally. Like scenic rallies, there's going to be a lot of road. And uh, a schooling rally, you know, that is one that can range from the easiest stuff to the most difficult stuff, just depending on who's there. Um, and so realistically, you know, I've had some guys in the past come that have said, hey, you know, I really wasn't interested in coming on this type of rally. I probably should have come on a schooling rally, but this is what worked for my schedule. And I don't mean to be rude. I don't mean to sound rude, but I'm telling you, don't come to the rallies just because they work for your schedule. That really kind of messes up the rally for other people. It makes it pretty difficult for me to try to find a, a trail that's going to be fun for everybody. Because the guys who come on solid and shred rallies are there to push themselves. And so if somebody, you know, who's uh, not ready to push themselves come out, comes on a rally like that, that's difficult. Now, I've had guys come on solid rallies on big bikes like 650s. And oh my gosh, they pushed themselves. And it was amazing. They did, they did quite well. But in the end, it probably would have been better if they had brought a smaller bike. So on a solid rally, the biggest bike you want to be on is probably like a 450. Um, you know, a 650 is not, probably not going to work on a solid rally unless you are just totally on your game. Uh, and then obviously on a shred rally, 
you know, you're gonna be want you're gonna want to be on a good, a good solid, you know, dirt bike or a lightweight dual sport. Um, it's just any bigger down. bikes that's gonna, you're gonna struggle. Whoa, whoa, you okay? So Warren is one of those guys that seriously was just up nice. for anything. It was awesome because we got in there and started doing hard stuff, and he was just like, "This is awesome," and he didn't give up. He didn't ever Ooh, get discouraged. Yeah. Um, you know, he had little crashes like that once in a while, well, you but got he'd it. get up you got and dust himself off and just keep on riding. It was awesome. There's Corey. So this is definitely like more shred rally type oh. of stuff here. Now my, my purpose <laughs> in kind of showing you this and stuff like that, it's not to discourage you or, or anything like that to be like, Ooh. hey, you know, don't come on shred rallies or don't come on solid rallies or whatever. Um, it's just to show you like, you know, this is the type of stuff that you can expect. There and a go. lot of times, nice. a lot of people say it very often when they come to the rallies is they say, this is so much harder than you make it look on camera. Oh. 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 <laughs> Woo. So it is, it is harder than it looks on camera. Um, that's the case anyway, you know. <laughs> Here he is, made it right up it. So, you know, so I guess what I'm trying to say is that, yeah, the rallies are a little more difficult, um, but they're doable. It, again, it just comes back to how much you're willing to push yourself and how much you're willing to push your bike. <laughs> There's Chad getting in the fetal position. He knows I'm just going to launch the bike. No, I should get out there. But... Anyway, so that that's the big difference. If you're willing to try to tackle difficult things, then you're going to love it. You're going to have an absolute blast. If you um, kind of have a limit for yourself, then you're probably going to want to schedule a rally that seems more appropriate for you and maybe a solid or a or a schooling rally is going to be more appropriate and keep in mind the schooling rallies aren't just all beginner stuff like what we do is we'll go out and we'll practice body positioning we'll practice some technique and then we'll basically go through and do the most difficult things and we'll scale it up you know as as time goes by to be the most difficult things that people are comfortable doing um, and sometimes we keep things pretty simple um, just so staying everybody, keeping everybody safe. And sometimes we amp it up quite a bit and, and really start pushing. And um, that's the rally that people are going to learn the most on. Uh, but at the same time, you know, sometimes people have given me feedback that's like, hey, that was way over my head. Um, and often that comes with uh, an additional thing. They say, hey, that was way over my head. I never thought I could do something like that but I did it and that was the most awesome thing ever. Um, occasionally somebody will say, that was over my head and I can't, I'm not doing that again. Don't take me on another thing like that. And that's totally fine too. That's why we have the veto rule. Now, if you're unsure of what the veto rule is, it's basically anybody in the group can say, hey, I'm vetoing this trail. It's just if you have a gut feeling you're just saying, hey, I'm, I'm not comfortable with this. And in Southern Utah, there's so many more trails that we can do, so many ways that we can go, that vetoing a trail and saying, hey, I'm not comfortable with this, um, that's totally fine. And we can go find another fun trail that's gonna be fun for everybody. Um, occasionally, there's the only way out of a trail, it's gonna be through something difficult. And in that case, I'm happy to ride your motorcycle out uh, or happy to help you get your bike out, however that needs to be done. If you're feeling really uncomfortable, we can call in the truck and the truck can take you out. It's just not, there's just so many options that you just, the point of these rallies is to have a bunch of guys there and help there and emergency services ready to go with the, you know, the, the Garmin in reach. And so that you just don't have to stress, right? You're not going to get stuck out there alone. We're not going to have, you know, big, bad emergency situations unless there's an injury. But realistically, it's like there's people there to help you. I'm there to help you get through. I know the trails really, really well. Um, that's why you're hiring me, right? I mean, it's not, 
you know, it's not because I'm your best buddy or anything like that, but it's because I know the trails and I know how to get out and, and how to have a good time and things like that. It's kind of a funny thing here, cruising on up. And uh, I own one now, I, I own two now. So, you know, something that happens actually kind of often is KTMs. I'm not kidding. They fall apart. <laughs> so we've had seats fall off. We've had, oh, fuel pumps break all the time. EFI bikes, KTMs in particular, struggle. Uh, here we had the whole back end <laughs> uh, uh, fall off. And so we had to <laughs> put that on and, and ride it home like that. So you guys, that is about it for the rally. Thank you so much for watching this, especially if you got this far. Um, let me know if you liked the video by, you know, <laughs> liking the video, hitting the thumbs up button. Um, and if there's a lot of likes on this video, then I'll make some more. It's kind of fun to make these. It's just kind of fun to talk about rides that we go on. And it's fairly easy to put them together, so I can put more content out if that's the case. The editing isn't so intense on these, but... Anyway, if you're interested in doing a rally with me, coming down to south southwest Utah and uh, joining me for a schooling rally, which is kind of for beginners, uh, or just, you know, if you want to build some skills, or a solid rally, which is kind of in the middle, uh, or a shred rally, which this kind of turned into, um, then go ahead and check out everrideadv.com. I'll put a link down in the description. And uh, it would really be awesome if you booked a rally. This has been kind of a hard time for small businesses, as you know. So uh, it's awesome if you would help to support my <laughs> small business here. We lost a lot of business in the springtime this year. So hopefully that will get better and, uh, in the future. So guys, thank you again for watching and uh, much love. Everride out.